One of the convicted killers at the center of the popular Netflix docu-series Making a Murderer is asking for his life sentence to be reduced. Brendan Dassey's legal team is announcing today they're petitioning the governor of Wisconsin to grant him clemency. When Dassey was 16 years old, he confessed to helping his uncle kill photographer Teresa Halbach. But critics and his lawyers claim Dassey was coerced into a false confession. He served more than 12 years in prison. In an episode of the popular Wrongful Conviction podcast released today, Dassey spoke from prison to host Jason Flom. Only on CBS This Morning, we spoke to Flom and Dassey's attorney, Laura Nyrider. He has spent almost half his life behind bars. Convicted murderer Brendan Dassey's legal options have been exhausted. Is this your last option? You know, I'll never say never, um, but this is our best option. Now, his attorney, Laura Nyrider, is turning to Wisconsin's new Democratic governor. We're filing a petition for executive clemency with Governor Tony Evers of Wisconsin. In 2007, Dassey and his uncle, Stephen Avery, were sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Teresa Halbach. The burned remains of the 25-year-old photographer were found on the Avery family property, along with her key and car. Avery, whose blood was found in that car, has claimed he was framed. I didn't do it. At the time of Halbach's murder, Avery was suing Manitowoc County and its former sheriff. He'd been released from prison in 2003 after DNA evidence exonerated him of a rape charge for which he'd served 18 years. The case became a sensation when Netflix released the docu-series Making a Murderer. How long is this going to take? This Amid the take murder investigation, yeah, Dassey, who is intellectually uh, limited, was interviewed by not. police four times in 48 hours without a lawyer or parent present. The 16-year-old eventually confessed to helping his uncle rape and kill Halbach. But Nyrider says Dassey was fed information by investigators. All right, I'm just going to come out and ask you, who shot her in the head? He did. Why didn't you tell us that? Because I couldn't think of it. Dassey quickly recanted, first to his mother while still in the interrogation room. Did you? Huh? Not really. What do you mean, not really? They got to my head. You're convinced he's innocent. Oh, he's I'm absolutely certain that he's innocent. Music industry executive Jason Flom is behind the careers of stars like Katy Perry and Lord. As a member of the board of the Innocence Project, he fights for criminal justice reform. Flom spoke to Dassey for his podcast, Wrongful Conviction. It's Dassey's first interview since going to prison. Well, I just wanted it all over with, so I said whatever they wanted to hear, you know. Most people grow up, as I did, with believing that the law enforcement are out to help us, right? They're the people you call when yeah. you need help. Did you have that same idea when you went in there? Yeah, I, I thought maybe anything I can do to help them, you know, I would. What do you hope the podcast does? False confessions are a problem that I want to bring as much attention to as we can. According to the Innocence Project, in about a quarter of wrongful convictions later overturned with DNA evidence, defendants made false confessions, admissions, or statements to law enforcement. Among the reasons people falsely confess, real or perceived intimidation by law enforcement, exhaustion, stress, and in some cases, mental limitations or limited education. And when Brendan Dassey was in special education, he was in 10th grade, he required an aide to sit next to him in the classroom to help him understand the teacher's spoken sentences, then shift him into the interrogation room, where he was barraged with 1,500 questions over three and a half hours. You don't have to be a lawyer to understand how an interrogation like that would overwhelm someone like Brendan Dassey. What gives you hope that this governor will grant you clemency? Governor Evers comes to this office from the Wisconsin Board of Education. He's an educator. He's been around special education students like Brendan. As for clemency, Dassey does not fit the criteria for a pardon. And the Wisconsin governor has said he won't consider commutations, which reduce the length of a sentence. 
CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. Why file for clemency now? Well, you have a new governor. And you have a new governor who has expressed himself unequivocally about being interested in social justice and criminal justice reform. So they believe, as his lawyers, that they may get a receptive audience here. That's Nyrider's hope. This is his best shot, and the moment is now. Mm -hmm. The moment is now for Brendan to come home. Dassey will turn 30 years old later this month. He is not eligible for parole for another nearly 30 years. In the past, Teresa Hallbach's fa family has said they believe the right men are behind bars for her murder. The former prosecutor in the case has said the same thing. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's worth reminding people that in 2016, a judge ruled that Dassey's confession was coerced. He was hours wow. away from being released when a federal appeals court blocked it. And it's interesting, his lawyer makes a very compelling case when she said when he was in 10th grade, he had to have someone sit yeah. by him just to translate what the teacher was saying. Yeah, this, this confession is extremely controversial. Mm -hmm. And it is also worth pointing out that there was no physical evidence actually linking Dassey to the crime. And big picture, 25% of overturned convictions yeah. had a false confession involved. Yeah. Amazing. It's, it's a real issue. All right, it'll be interesting to see what happens.